So according to some things that commented on a previous video of ours where I discussed why we have chosen not to live in Denmark, I am apparently a liar because of what I said about the drug issue that is plaguing Denmark. And yeah, I guess that these people must also be thinking that the Danish media is lying to them recently because these are just some of the things that the media has been writing about recently. And I'm hoping that we can all agree that it doesn't make any sense that all of these people have decided to work on a lie to make Denmark look bad for no reason. So I think we should have a conversation about it. We're going to do a quick disclaimer because this video is not meant to point fingers at people who have what is per definition an illness. Addiction could hit anyone in society and it's not something we should judge people for when they're already in a tough situation. This is purely a commentary on what is happening in Danish society and the only people I will be pointing fingers at are the people that I feel like can do something which are politicians in Denmark. So I think you have some personal experience about addiction. Yeah, I grew up having a mom who was addicted to alcohol. My mom got into rehab when I was in my 20s. Today she works with other people who have addictions to either alcohol or other substances like drugs. So it is a thing that's very close to me personally. It's a thing I take very seriously because my life was affected by it growing up. Being a Dane, seeing how it has developed in Denmark and how it has become more and more common when I've been out partying, I've seen more and more drugs in the past few years and I would say it's a very obvious increase. I've had a few instances where I was offered drugs for free. I know that people say that that will never happen. I'm sorry to say but that is not my experience at all. As a woman I have been offered drugs plenty of times free of charge for a number of reasons that I can only guess what the purpose of that was. I think we can all maybe put two and two together that it's easier to get something from a woman who is not fully coherent in that moment. I also had a very unfortunate situation where a friend at the time tried to dope me with weed cookies. I happened to have a related allergy, so thank god that I heard it from the neighboring room that that was their plan because it could have turned into a medical emergency and it is also very illegal to give people stuff without their knowledge. Sadly, I have been the person that has said that, hey, you do what you do, but please don't do it around me. And people in my circle say, oh, understood, like totally respect that. I'm not into that anyway. I would never do that around you. And then a couple hours later, when we're at a private party, suddenly they have sniffed a line of Coke and I am sitting there and can't do anything other than panic because now they are projectile vomiting all over the place and I can't really guarantee what's going on because they've also been drinking heavily. That is just some of the experiences I have had. I have also had friends that I've had to cut off because of drugs. I have had a friend that got very far into an addiction and got clean, thank god. It is a very real thing and it does upset me that some people accuse me of lying when I'm honestly just speaking from pure personal experience with this and I am in no way someone that goes out a lot at all. I go out far less than what is common in Denmark. I don't drink very frequently. I'm not the person that's out every weekend so I find it very hard to believe that the people in Denmark that do party the regular amount are really going to say that they've never had any knowledge of anything going on. I mean that's awesome if you do but I also know that we have a bias in Denmark of not really seeing how serious it is when drugs are suddenly circulating at the place that we frequent. I don't want people getting the wrong idea. Drugs are illegal in Denmark fully. You cannot smoke weed, you cannot do cocaine, you cannot do any of these things legally but it has been normalized. My mom works in a rehab center so I can say People don't come in for weed because technically you cannot be addicted to weed the same way you can other drugs. That's a completely different conversation. But cocaine is the thing they see the most by far. It is the cool drug. It is like the, the thing you take when you're the, you're the smart guy. Doctor. 
employer, especially yeah. a CEO. Lot of people who work in finance. Yeah, it's yeah. the it was the Wall Street drug, even like congressmen. Yeah, it's also a very great party drug, unfortunately. And in Denmark, we see a very big popularity in the party drugs, so ecstasy, MDMA amphetamines and then it's other stuff like benzos, other prescription drugs, ADHD medication because it can help you if you don't have ADHD. It can make you focus like nobody's business and unfortunately university students, not just in Denmark, Ivy League schools have a huge issue with this. Someone with ADHD will sell you their medication to make more money so you can study really hard to become a lawyer, a doctor, someone in politics. It's the pressure from my peers, so by taking smart drugs I can work longer to achieve the same grades as they can without taking them. It is an issue everywhere in the West from what I have seen, but Denmark especially is very bad in Europe. People here in China will be curious about why it's so bad, what caused the, the situation, why is drugs so well accepted by the people in Denmark. So first of all, to put it out there, like I said, anyone can get addicted. It is also a genetic component that you can have the genetics of someone who's easily addicted to things. So if you have a parent that suffered with addiction, it's more likely to be in your own genetics that you could have the same issue so that's the biological side of all of this and then there's risk factors that increase it so if you drink frequently and if you smoke cigarettes you are more likely to experiment with drugs mm. statistics show that that's true and we have a very very heavy drinking culture from a very young age in denmark there's no legal drinking age in Denmark, meaning someone who's 10 can legally consume alcohol. But you cannot purchase it before you're 16, but that's already younger than what a lot of countries allow. Paired with the fact that drinking culture is introduced to us already at high school age, that the school has Friday bar or Friday cafe, as they might call it, where you drink together as students, you have parties at the school where mm. everyone drinks heavily. Yeah. That part is very shocking to me. Students can first can drink, second they can drink at school yeah. together. And there's bar in school. You know, you don't just go to the party at school, usually you go to a pre-party, so you're already drunk arriving there. So of course all of these things create an atmosphere, and I would say it's, it's not like there aren't people that don't do it, but it is difficult if you're not a part of the group and there's a huge group pressure, which is what you're seeing with kids and drugs now because kids are being introduced to drugs to my shock too actually as young as middle school that they can buy it via snapchat noget af det vi også har beskrevet det er at folk sælger stoffer på gangen og sådan noget det er noget i har oplevet ja ja der var ret meget hvordan foregik det? Oh, over snapchat i can't believe that a kid going to middle school can just get drugs while they're at school that's concerning and I would say at high school, when I entered high school, I was shocked at how easy it was to know where drugs were. Drugs were being sold at my high school's dorms. I am sure they still get sold at my old high school's dorms. And it was just a thing that some people did. I didn't personally witness it, but I was fully aware that it was happening. And since then, it's just grown and grown and grown. And I think there's too little conversation about the serious impact that it has. Like the story of Emma, one of the stories we showed in the beginning of the video, where she started doing cocaine when she was in high school at a party because the group pressure, come on, it's fun. You're gonna feel great which you do when you take drugs. Mm. Do not tell children that it will be an awful experience and mm. you will regret doing it because if they try it and they think that felt great, that's the best feeling ever, which for most people drugs are, that's why they're addictive. And then you spend most of your time chasing this amazing first time feeling and you'll need more and more to replicate anything similar to that and regular life can never make you feel like that. That is also what I've heard from the people I know that had addictions to drugs is I can never replicate the happiness I felt on drugs and that is sad, that is depressing. And in Emma's case where she kept doing it on the weekends, eventually it decayed her nose because of cocaine's ability to restrict blood flow to the area. 
So one day she was blowing her nose and a piece of her nasal wall came out. That is not necessarily fixable. She was lucky that doctors could fix it. In some cases, they simply can't. It is a painful thing to live with because you have open sores in one of the most sensitive areas of mm -hmm. your face. Your nose can, in rare cases, collapse entirely. All of these things come with tremendous risk, but in Denmark, unfortunately, there's not a lot of focus on it because there's more focus on the fact that it's fun to do on the weekend. Another problem in it is that I think movies like, and TV shows for that matter, like you're a fan of Breaking Bad, you've mm -hmm. watched quite a lot of it. Yeah. They portray addiction so far off of reality. Mm. They portray as if you have to be doing drugs constantly. That is not reality. That is not the definition of an addiction. An addiction is that you need to continue doing it, that you're chasing it. So a lot of people might think, I'm not addicted. I don't do drugs every day. You don't need to. Very few people I have ever heard about did drugs every single day, or at least that's very, very late in an addiction cycle. I think one, one thing is in Denmark, students or kids, uh, they're not taught how bad drug is. Mm. They're not taught what is drug. These education is lacking. Yeah. There's not a, a social atmosphere that we hate drug, we fight against drug. Mm -hmm. We want a drug-free society. Yeah, we don't have to. And I think you're right, like, I will give credit. The Chinese society really puts a lot of emphasis on why drugs are bad and teaches about the real risks of it and doesn't keep it so surface level. I was very shocked at the level of information people get here. And I think that's very good. I think for Chinese people, it must also be shocking, just like it is for me to know that middle schoolers are out here selling drugs to other middle schoolers. Yeah. And unfortunately, I I can see how people get started so often. I'm guessing for a middle school, it's probably the money that's attractive. Like, oh, it's just weed, you know, it's like legal in other countries. Like, it's not serious, it's nothing, right? But then you can make some extra money and eventually they probably get hooked into doing more and more because it's very hard to replace that money flow Yeah. with real jobs, especially when you're a minor because you get paid less than an adult, right? And maybe you're the cool guy then, you feel cool, you're like the big dude, everyone respects you, right? And that's very easy to fall for when you're an insecure kid. It's very easy to fall for when you're an insecure adult. A lot of people that get hooked in these communities struggle with insecurity. I'm saying this as someone who struggles a lot with insecurity, so I can see how feeling accepted could lure you into something you might not have wanted to get into. Or you got started on drugs yourself, in these cases where you get drugs for free in the beginning, because then you feel good, next time you buy a little bit, and now they have a client. They might have been your friend in the beginning, mm -hmm. a fake friendship to be able to sell you more. And the cycle then continues because now drugs cost a lot of money. How am I gonna afford these things? Oh, dude, you could sell too. And you can see how it slowly expands. I wanna make it very clear that the people selling on the street are not the people making the big bucks off of this and they're not the ones actually doing the whole back part. The people that do that are organized criminals. It's on a way bigger scale than what any normal person can imagine. And it's very hard to take those people down and they have no mercy. They don't care about the little guy on the street. Like if he gets caught with drugs by the police and they take them from him, he still has to pay for those drugs. So now he's forced to sell even more drugs or maybe be lured into trafficking drugs, which is what we unfortunately saw a man do in Denmark where he owed a lot of money because of his own addiction to both drugs and gambling, unfortunately. And he was lured into trafficking drugs into Greenland, another territory of Denmark where, it's, where drugs sell for a lot more because it's harder to get them there. He was carrying it internally in his body. Unfortunately, the material that the drugs were wrapped in dissolved during the fight and he passed away. He was a father. He was someone's husband. My belief is that that's a very painful way to pass away and I feel very, very sorry for his family and I wish there would have been a way to get that man help to get out of this problem because I'm sure at least that could have been an option. I feel like it should have been an option and that's on us as a society. I do have sympathy for him. It is a tragedy. I just think in comparison it is a smaller tragedy because if he smuggled the drug to Greenland, it would have affected even more people. Yeah, more people have overdosed, like mm -hmm. how many people die mm -hmm. because of this? 
I can completely respect that viewpoint. I get it. I think that's a very normal viewpoint. I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way you do. I just also think as a society, sometimes you get further by helping people. And at least in China, I know that you can get help if you need it. In China, if, you, if you're found that you're doing drugs, just like what we met, we, in the police station. We went there to find my stolen phone and we saw a guy getting booked for having done drugs and I gotta say the police officer was actually very sweet to him. Like yeah. it wasn't cruel or demeaning, it was like, it was positive dude. And he was like, okay. And he stood and got a picture taken with his positive test. So here you get forced into rehab. Yeah. You have rehab found by the government. Of course it's not perfect, the, the public rehab, but it works. I think sometimes it's necessary yeah. to force rehab. Unfortunately, in Denmark, our system works very differently. The situation in Denmark is complicated because our government and your government, when it comes to healthcare, it's put together a little bit differently. So we have the central government, just like you guys do. Their resources are handed out to the regions. So they have a piece of the healthcare system in the region. So for example, I'm from region Midwest in Denmark, on Yulan. And then further things are then split into counties. And they are the ones in charge of what they're willing to do for you when it comes to addiction. And unfortunately, in a lot of them, it is nothing or very, very little. In my mom's case where it was alcohol, they were willing to offer her that she could go take this thing called anti-boost, which is not approved to be used in hardly any countries because it's actually a toxin mm -hmm. and it can kill you. But it's supposed to not make you drink anymore and it doesn't. It has been proven that it doesn't, but the government in Denmark unfortunately makes money off of this drug because it was invented in Denmark and that is disgusting. We really need to stop using this bullshit because it hurts people and it can kill people. And I hope that that's not what we want to do when we treat people with alcoholism. Mm -hmm. With drugs, there's even less resources in my experience. Some people are lucky to be in a commune that are willing to send you to rehab or pay part of it or you might have a job mm -hmm. if you're really lucky where your boss has sympathy with this and will send you but in most cases you'll be paying for it yourself and it's expensive to go to in-person treatment i think the fundamental difference is we see drug or someone doing drug as a threat to the society yeah it's like a social illness so of course the society as a whole needs to pay to prevent it i i guess a lot of things we see as some other people's personal problem. From my perspective, mm -hmm. drug is never a personal problem. But addiction affects a lot more than just that one person. It affects their kids that will almost guaranteed need to get help psychologically from what they grew up having to deal with because it's a very, very unstable environment to be stuck in and you can't do anything. There is health complications that they will end up in in Denmark since the healthcare system is free. That's also something you'll be paying for. So it's in everyone's best self-interest, I think, as a society to help. And I also just think it's the most humane thing to do, especially from the perspective that Denmark does call itself the welfare state. Unfortunately, as it stands right now, that welfare state does not cover people that have addiction problems in a functioning way. I'm sure a lot of people have heard about Christiania. It's an area in Copenhagen that's like a free state. And in Christiania, you have what's called Pusher Street. Pusher Street today is run entirely by gangs. The people that live in Christiania really don't want you to go there and buy these drugs. Like they're begging people to please don't go there as a tourist and buy drugs because you're supporting organized crime that is affecting their community. Police did take it down very recently for the first time, but I don't know if it stayed gone. I haven't seen updates about it, but I could imagine that it probably won't work to just do it once. But the government could definitely do a lot more. The punishments for drug dealing are extremely low in Denmark on average. You really need to take it very, very far before they do anything serious to you. And that's a criticism I see Chinese people give Scandinavian countries in general is that our punishments are so lenient that it doesn't produce a result. Yeah. Which in this, I think, since it is such a growing issue, we probably need to take it more seriously. So I think most people's logical thing will be, okay, kids are literally getting introduced to this, so of course people are doing something, right? But in Denmark, we are what my mom loves to call it. We're allergic to, well, we have what's called 
bewahrungsangst. Like we're scared of being in touch with these things. Where it makes us uncomfortable because talking about it is scary. Admitting that there's a problem is scary for anyone that has to own up to the fact that they are addicted because again, most people that are addicted don't know that they are or at least they will never admit to it. It's a very scary realization and usually people that have an addiction hold on to the mask, the, the control very hard. The last thing people let go of is their job. That's usually a very serious sign that your addiction has gotten very bad when you can no longer take care of your job. So don't think that just because people show up for work that that means that they have their shit together. But unfortunately in Denmark we're also very proud of being the country that was at the forefront of the freedom movement, the freedom of sex, the freedom of freedom to explore who you are, freedom of everything. And with that came drugs. In the late 60s, 70s especially, where Denmark really was a beacon in this. You can decide if you agree with that or not. I'm guessing a lot of Chinese people won't necessarily agree with this, which is fair. But this has also made it so that people are a little bit scared of kind of being controlling of others. Saying that, hey, doing drugs is not good for you. I know that I have been called like the boring person for being like, hey, so you do know this has risk, right? You could actually end up having a mental issue for life because of doing drugs and it's not something you can spot or prevent. It just can happen to you. And people are like, oh, you're over-exaggerating. You're being annoying right now. Because it's not fun. I'm not yeah. acknowledging the fact that like, oh, it's just something I do on the weekend, Julie. I'm just doing it at a party. And I get that that's how it started. I get it. I so get that it's very easy to fall into that. I can't say how my life would have turned out if I didn't grow up with a parent who had an addiction. I'm sure my life could have looked very differently if I hadn't been a little bit nervous about binge drinking like a lot of my peers were doing on the weekend. Because in Denmark, it's not uncommon to know people, especially during high school and university days, that drink four days a week and they drink a lot and you drink a little bit here and a little bit there. That's just a cultural issue and it's also one that probably needs addressing if we are to change this. And I think that's going to be a big task, but I hope that we can push for it. I really, really hope so. So mm. in recent statistics that were just collected, Denmark is the country in Europe that does the second highest amount of cocaine. The only one beating us is the Dutch. The Netherlands is pretty much like a big harbor, so it's very easy for drugs to make their way into the country. Now at the border of Denmark, we're seeing more cocaine being stopped at the border than ever before. We had more than 800 kilos of drugs wash up on our shores, which has never happened in these amounts before. There is a very scary thing that is happening, and I fear, as someone who does love my home country, believe it or not, that this could evolve into something that we can't stop again. And I think for Chinese people, you guys emphasize with that or empathize with that because Qing Dynasty is literally the worst scenario of drugs taking over a whole country. Yeah, I think Chinese people know how hard to stop it. Think about it. The first opium war happened in 1840s. Since then, after 100 years, we finally been opium in this country. So it, it is difficult. If you if your society normalize it as a, a part of the society, just like cigarette or alcohol, mm -hmm. it's hard to quit. It's like your whole society addicted to it. I'm fully aware that hearing all of this is a lot of information to take in and that for a lot of people it might be a bit shocking to hear this about Denmark because we do have a very strong image of being this amazing fairy tale country where everything is just magical and perfect and there's no problems at all but we're also just a country and every country has problems i also know that for danes that might be watching this that this can be very hard to confront and it's uncomfortable i'm sure that the people that left those comments calling me a liar don't actually have a problem with me it's just a very uncomfortable thing to be made aware of but i hope and this is my personal hope we as a country can work towards living up to our image of a welfare state because it is amazing to be a welfare state. It's amazing to care about each other. Nistikalihul, all that is a part that I love about Denmark. It makes me so happy. Growing up with that was magical. 
but that also means that we have to take responsibility for when things aren't going the way we wish that they were because of course no one wishes for this to be a problem i'm sure no one wants to have an addiction and if you or someone you know is struggling with addiction i hope that we in the future can provide a way to catch you when you fall and i hope that when you ask for help that our government our welfare system can be there to grab you and say we got you i get that that's not the situation we have right now there are places you can go even though you might have to pay for it yourself i can guarantee you if you have any way of getting there even though it's expensive and i understand that that's an ex it's insane cost but you're worth getting help everyone deserves to live a life that they enjoy and that they feel proud of and i so wish that for everyone mm -hmm. watching our video and yeah i hope that people can take this to heart i hope that we as danes can push for better government reforms when it comes to these things because again mm -hmm. we definitely pay enough taxes to do it most chinese think denmark is a very good country i think most people don't know this part of Denmark. And I think as a social democrat society, the biggest, the most powerful strength is from the public. You can support each other. That's the definition of being a welfare state. So I think that's a very good quality of Denmark. I hope that quality would work on this. Like I hope Denmark can do better on drug. I hope that <laughs> in spite of this being a very serious subject, we tried our best to make it comfortable, as comfortable as it can be and still be concise. And yeah, I hope to see the government do something with what we've been seeing in the news. I'm hopeful that there'll be a more public movement against it. I know we can do it. We've done great things before to improve our country and this is definitely not something that we can't improve and fix. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope that you'll come back for future videos. Bye, you guys. Bye.